Hello, Curran here. This video is about making this world map with D3 and SVG. If you know basic DOM manipulation with D3, you're familiar with loading data, D3 data joins, and CSS, and you want to make a map, then this video is for you. The topics we're going to cover here include loading and parsing topo.json, rendering geographic features, using various map projections, rendering the projected sphere outline, and tweaking map styles. All right, let's embark on this journey of creating this map. I'm going to start by forking this let's make a face example. And I'll change it to let's make a map with D3. And I'll just delete this old readme content. And in index.js, I'll delete everything except getting the SVG. The first thing we need for the map is the data that goes into it, you know, the outlines of the countries. There's a great project called World Atlas, and it's released as a package on NPM. So if you just do a Google search for World Atlas NPM, you'll find it. This is a project by Mike Bostock, which converts the natural Earth vector data to topo.json format, which is an efficient format for representing data about uh, geography. It's like a compressed version of GeoJSON. But in any case, this URL here is what you can copy to load in the low resolution shapes for the countries of the world. See, if I paste that in a new tab, this is what it looks like. It's a bunch of JSON data that has countries inside of it. And from this data, we can render polygons on the screen for each country, which is our goal. So I'm going to copy this URL here and go back to our visualization code. What we want to do here is load that data using d3.json, which we can import with like this, json from d3. And then we can invoke that, json, and pass in, in quotes, that URL. I'll just paste it right there. This returns a promise. So to get access to this data, we can say dot then, and then pass a function that accepts as input the data. And in the body of this function, I'm just going to say console.log data just to take a look and see if this worked. If we open up the dev tools, this is what we see. It's just that JSON data parsed into a JSON uh, or a JavaScript object in memory. So we could access data.arcs, data.beatbox, or data.objects. And I think this is, here it is, this is where the countries are. Because this data is formatted as topo JSON and there are D3 utilities to render GeoJSON data structures. We need to convert the TopoJSON to GeoJSON in memory using a library that's called TopoJSON, also written by Mike Bostock. TopoJSON is also an NPM package, so we can also load this from unpackage. We need to load the script tag onto our page. So to get the URL for that, we can type unpackage unpkg.com slash topojson and that resolves to this URL here and if we change it to .min.js we get the minified version so I think I'll use this one here to load this script onto our page I'm going to copy this URL here and then over in our visualization code in our index.html we can add a new script tag and then as the src source attribute of the script tag we can paste that URL there. Then in our index.js we can import things from topo.json. So I can say import something from topo.json. topo.json.feature is the function that we need to convert our topo.json into geo.json. 
in our code, we can say import feature from topojson. And then we can invoke feature, passing in as the first argument the data. And the second argument is going to be the countries. But I forget where that is in the object structure. So I'm going to take a look again in the DevTools. We have data dot objects and within objects we have countries that's what we want so the second argument here to feature can be data dot objects dot countries so what I'll do is I'll assign a new variable called countries const countries equals feature of data and data dot objects dot countries at this point, what I really feel like I need is a reference example of a map to see how everything else sort of fits together. My favorite way of finding examples is blockbuilder.org slash search. You could type, say, map into here, and then just look at the ones with thumbnails. And I know Mike Bostock has like the, the simplest, most canonical example, so I can search by M. Bostock as the username. This looks like a good starting point, US States Topo JSON. This is pretty close to what we want, but we want to do the same thing for countries. One thing we need is geopath from D3. So over in our code here, we can import geopath from D3. This will convert the data path into an SVG path string that we can use on SVG paths. We also need to use a map projection. And I'm just going to use um, Mercator projection. We can switch it out later and see different projections. But we can import Geo Mercator also from D3. Next, we need to set up instances of GeoPath and Geo Mercator. So we can say const projection equals geo mercator and then we can set up our path generator so we can say const path generator equals geo path and we can pass as input to geo path our projection by saying geo path dot projection that's the method of geo path to set the projection and then we'll pass in projection, our variable here. Now what we want to do is make one SVG path element for each of our countries. But first, I kind of want to just take a look at what's in this countries variable exactly. I think it's an array, but I just want to confirm. In the dev tools, we can see we can access countries dot features. That's really what we need here. There's one of these entries for each of our countries. Let's set up a data join for our paths. We can say const paths equals, and we have SVG in scope here, so we can say SVG dot select all path dot data countries dot features. And I'll make that a new line there. Now that we've got this data join, we can append a new path for each of our elements here. So we could say paths dot enter dot append path. And what we want to do is set the D attribute of each of these paths based on the country. So just in the enter selection for now, we can say dot attr of D is going to be set to, well, a function that takes as input one of our features and uses our path generator, path generator, and we pass in the feature here, D. All right, it works. We've got a map here. So now that it's working, we can simplify this code. This function here takes as input D, and it just passes it into path generator. So this whole formulation here is exactly equivalent to path generator itself. It's a function that takes as input a feature. 
Also, since we're just accessing paths.enter and we're not using paths anywhere else, we can easily just get rid of this variable and you know put the enter selection directly here on the data join. And I think I'll just make this one line here. And I'll get rid of this console.log because that's just for our debugging purposes. And we're not actually using the width and height of the SVG. So I'm just going to delete those variables. And this, by the way, happens to work perfectly because the D3 projections are sort of set up to work by default with this, um, this width and height of 960 by 500. And if you wanted to make it work for a different aspect ra ratio, you could. But I'm not going to do that here because it's working nicely. Now we can apply some simple styles to our map here to make it look a little different. We can do this in CSS by selecting on all of our path elements. And we can tweak, for example, the fill and the stroke. Since this is land, I think I'll set the fill to be green. Hey, why not? And you can sort of see the outlines, but they're just barely noticeable because they're actually just the spaces between things. So I'm going to set the stroke. Let's set the stroke to be, say, black. That's kind of heavy, though. I think I'd like just sort of subtle black outlines. So we can actually set the stroke dash opacity, which is how transparent the stroke lines are, to be like, I don't know, 0 0.5 or 0 0.2. And what color are the oceans? I mean, they're not white. Let's set the background color of the body to be the color of the ocean. So on the body, we can say background dash color is blue. I don't know, that blue is a little harsh there. There might be a dark blue in CSS. There we go. Dark blue. And there might even be a light green. What if I type light green? Hmm. Now the outlines look pretty uh, dark, so we can set the stroke opacity to something a little bit less. There we go. In the D3 Geo package, which is part of the default D3 bundle, there is an embarrassment of riches in terms of different map projections that are available to you to use. Let's try out this one here, Geo Orthographic. In our code here, it should be as easy as changing Geo Mercator to Geo Orthographic and importing that from D3. See, now we have a globe. Now let's try geostereographic. You just change it here, change it here, and boom, it uses that projection. I kind of like this one here, geo equal rectangular. So we can just change it there, change it there, and there it is. This is a good one too, the geo natural earth. Let's see if this one works. Yeah, I think this is sort of my personal favorite. If you want to sort of go all out with map projections, take a look at d3-geo-projection. This is a package that's not in the default D3 bundle, and it has a lot more various different sorts of uh, map projections that you can use. If you want to use this package, you need to include another script tag on your page. One thing that's not quite right here is that the background is blue for the whole page, but because we're using this projection that sort of curves the earth like that, um, part of the background that's blue is actually not on the earth. So what I'd like to do is make the background white, but make the earth part of the background blue. I noticed on a lot of Mike Bostock's examples, there's this big thick path around sort of the border of the earth. So 
I tore apart this one and isolated what's going on. And it turns out, if you pass in this object here, type is sphere, into the path generator, then it generates this path. So let's do that in our code here. Let's make a new path. We can say svg.append path. And on this path, we can set the attribute d to be our path generator. And we can pass into this path generator just this one object where the type is sphere. And look at that. There it is. Incredible. I'll just change these quotes to be consistent. And now, you know, we have paths for the countries, but also, also a path for the sphere. So we need to be more specific with our CSS. So to do that, I'm going to give our paths classes. I'm going to say, all right, this one has the class attribute of sphere, like that. But our path elements that represent countries get the class of country. Now we have two classes, country and sphere. So in our CSS, instead of selecting on all paths, we can select on dot country to make the countries this color. And instead of setting the background color to be dark blue, we can select on our sphere and set the fill color of our sphere to be dark blue. Sweet. And you know, that almost looks a little bit too dark. What if we just set it back to blue? I don't know. I want to tweak the heck out of this color. So I'm going to inspect the DOM. Here's our sphere path. And did you know that the Chrome DevTools actually has this interactive color picker where you can just change the color here and see it update in real time? So I'll just, you know, experiment, tweak this color here until, uh, you know, I see something that looks just exactly right. There we go. I think that's our final product here. All right, that's it for making a world map with D3 and SVG. Thanks for watching. Take care.